let's start working with shape tools. We have imported a sample model, and maybe we can spend some time to assign to its part some material before proceeding. This can be done by dragging the material on the model, or in the parts list. Now, according to our selection mode and selection tool, we can select one or more elements on the model. For instance, let's select the polygons around this vertex on top of the sample. We can do this with vertices mode, and with the pick tool, by first clicking on the vertex, and then pressing grow. We could have done the same with polygons mode, and maybe the circle tool. It's up to you. Now a transform gizmo appears at the center of our selection. It can be used to move it, or rotate it, or scale it, according to the unity tool which is active. In the dedicated inspector here you can find a selection transform tool, which is used to keep control over transforms parameters. It works pretty much as Unity Game Objects transforms. The interesting part here is the Edit Pivot section, where you can fix the reference system the transform is using. By activating the Edit Pivot mode, we can change its position. For instance let's say we want the editing pivot here. Now if we switch back to Transform mode, we can see that the selection is rotated, or scaled, with respect to the new pivot position. There is also the option to change a pivot rotation, but that's a bit harder to use, and requires some planning. Let's move back the pivot at the center of the selection. Now let's add a 45 degrees to the Y component of the gizmo. This changes the red X axis of the gizmos. Now, if we switch back to transform mode, and we change the X component, the selection will rotate around the transformed axis, rather than the original one. Same thing if we want to scale in the direction of the new axis. During modeling, you may need to control the position of your selection with some precision. For instance, let's select an edge. Let's also move the gizmos at the position of one of its vertices. Now we can move the edge by dragging around that vertex. Let's now activate vertex snapping on the X component. The default threshold will be fine. When we move the edge, the X component of its pivot, which is its first vertex here, will snap to the X position of any other vertex. A red line is rendered here, showing that the snapping is happening. A better way to position transform in gizmos is using background. Backgrounds in Curved Poly Editor are flexible elements, which can be used both as image references and as grids. Let's say they are background grids which can be assigned an image. We can add a background with Add Background. Then we need to set it up. We can place it where we want using its position or extension gizmos. We can also control such positions in the background grid section of the dedicated inspector, which appears only if you click on one of the background gizmos. Here you can also add an image, and control the number of nodes in the grid, and their properties. Once your grid is set up, you can snap to it if snap to grids is active. The snapping happens on the edit pivot of the selection transform. If you don't want this to happen at some point, you can always disable the snap to grids options, or even the grids visibility to hide them. Since placing grids may take time, it is useful to save them. For instance I have made here a set of reference grids which is good to shape small objects with some precision. I can now use save backgrounds to generate a backgrounds asset which contains them. Backgrounds assets can also be edited in Unity Inspector, once generated. Stored curved poly backgrounds can be reopened on need, while editing other shapes, with load backgrounds. Curved Poly Editor already comes with a little set of pre-made backgrounds which can be useful. You can load one, and then you can decide to remove the backgrounds you don't need. Once you have a background picked in scene, you can also align the scene view camera to it, with Align Camera, so that it gets behind as intended. Now let's talk about handles. Handles are used to give shape to edges. Each edge has two vertices, and for each vertex it has two edges. For instance, make sure the handles option is selected, and vertices mode and pick tool chosen, and click a vertex. Here you can see that there are four handles attached to it. You can click on a handle to pick it. A picked handle is rendered as a set of three arrows. On the dedicated inspector a section appear about the handle. From this section we can pick back the vertex attached to the handle with back to vertex. So, pick again the handle. We can also pick the edge it belongs with back to edge. Handles are visible only when their edges or vertices are picked, so you need to use the pick tool to access them. Back to vertex and back to edges can be used to navigate the model, and to investigate the exact relationships between elements in the model. Now, there are two kind of handles in curved poly, free handles and constrained handles. We will start with constrained handles, since they are the most common. A constrained handle has a cyan, magenta, and yellow arrows, where the yellow and cyan arrows have a circular shape. This handle is constrained, as all the handles on this vertex, because this vertex is smooth. In order to keep the smoothness, all the handles must lay on the same plane. 
this plane is defined by a vertex editing normal, which you can see here. So, about the three handles. The magenta handle controls the distance from the vertex. When you use this, the handle keeps constrained to the plane, so the length handle doesn't affect the other handles. The yellow arrow is called the roll of the handle. It controls how much the handle rotates around the editing normal. So, again, when you change the roll, the handles keep being on the same plane, and its position don't affect the smoothness plane, neither the editing normal on the vertex, or the other handles. The cyan arrow is the pitch. It makes the handle rotate in a way which force the whole editing plane to rotate together with the handle, in this sense affecting both the editing normal on the vertex, and the other handles. Handles have also a weight parameter. This parameter affects the shape of the curve without changing the actual handle. If you are familiar with weighted curves, from other modeling tools, you should know how it works. If you are not, let's say that the more the weight is high, the more the curves is dragged towards the handle. The less is the weight, the less the curve is attracted by the handle. You should try it a bit on your own to understand this. Terry often, two handles are aligned together. This alignments are part of the structure of the handles, and can be added or removed only with editing tools, in the process of making custom primitives. When you are in shape tools, you can see if two handles are aligned by looking form a blue handle. For instance here we have picked an handle, and on the same vertex, opposite to it, there is a blue handle. The blue handle is aligned with the one we have picked. An aligned handle is affected not only by the pitch of the picked handles, but also by the roll. So they will rotate together around the vertex, keeping aligned one with the other. Again, the length arrow and the weight control do not affect the aligned handle. In the inspector you can find also some more tools to control the handle's direction. The direction of the handle is the X, Y, and Z of the vector going from the vertex to the handle. You can directly assign it here, but be aware that using the direction controls will affect the roll, pitch and length at once in more complex ways. One useful instrument here is the center handle. With the center handle you can force the roll in way that makes the handle centered, with respect to the two other handles on the left and on the right. If the two handles on the left and on the right are aligned, this will surely put the picked handle at 90 degrees with both of them. Pay attention to this exact configuration shown here, vertices with four handles, and with four polygons and four edges, where the polygons has a 90 degree corner on each side of the vertex, are the best. On this conditions all the algorithms used to shape the polygons works at their best, making the shape of the model being smooth across edges, as intended. We are going to discuss this better in no time. Before going on, let's have a look on free handles. One possible situation in which handles are free is when a vertex is marked as sharp. Sharp vertices are the ones represented with an empty square. Again, you can decide which vertices are sharp with the editing tools. Handles of sharp edges are not constrained. Here the editing normal on the vertex is less relevant, still important though for a few processes used in other tool sets. For free handles the dedicated inspector looks the same, but the roll and pitch arrows are not in scene. Here we are rather free to change the direction of the handle with a simple move tool. Of course, it is intended, when you change a free handle, sharp features might appear on the model or not, depending on how you place the handle. 